everybody, and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and... Raylene. Hey. It's true. What's up? I was just thinking in that one moment, as I said the introduction, I am now binding books together. So <gasps> if I started a podcast about book binding, which I think is a terrible idea books because... Books bound. <laughs> it would be, yeah, it would like be books bound. <laughs> <laughs> or books abound maybe would be better. Books rebound. I'm not uh, the. I'm not rebinding. Yeah, them. your story is kind of all over the place. Oh, God damn it! It is a narrative <laughs> nightmare. Um, speaking of binding, <laughs> I thought it would be fun to do a little update oh, yeah. because. So basically, we pre-recorded one episode. The episode that came out last week with the wonderful Julia, mm -hmm. that was a little bit pre-recorded because of whatever, our schedules. But the episode before that is when I really talked a l at length about marbled papers. Yes. And that, but for me, that was less than a week ago. So strange, yeah. A week ago, not even a week ago. And so <laughs> for me, not that much time has passed since I've done my marbling. And I wanted to show you guys the <gasps> first finished book it's so um, that I have made. Thank you, Raylene. I am obsessed so, with it. I know. I'm really glad that you like this one so much because it's got a bunch of mistakes, but it is I not a bunch of mistakes. There's a couple of things that I did wrong. Um, the paper on the inside should be like half an inch shorter because it's kind okay. of like it will stick out at the bottom a little bit. Oh, yeah. I didn't make the binding tight, the stitching tight enough. Um, there, so there's a couple of mistakes, but overall, I'm really, really, really happy with it. As my first journal that I made with my own paper. And you did that at home by yourself, right? Like you didn't yes. do it in no, any special place. No, it was just place. me. Oh, it so was cool. so exciting. It was so exciting. And now I want to show you really, I've started on another, I started it this morning when I should have been emailing. Literally, I should be emailing my accountant. And instead I was like, I'm going to make another journal. That's, <laughs> That's hilarious. a little too stressful. Um, I've started this one. Oh, it's so cute and small. Which I'm trying to show really. Oh, that's it nice. Mural. It looks like a latte. Yes, it does. That it is was part of my paper. brown wow. series. Um, <laughs> but it's like literally, I still have the needle and stitch. Like oh I'm gosh. in the middle of stitching the sheets. That's and incredible. here is the rest of the paper wow. um, and the other cover. So everything still needs to be stitched together. But yeah. I'm having a real, very good time. And I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep doing this type of book, which is called a Coptic stitch, mm. because I think it would be really great to like become super good at doing yeah. the Coptic stitch yeah. and like feel like really confident because right now I'm still like having to check. Oh, wait, what do I do next? Oh, what do yeah. I do next? Yeah. Um, but if I could just do it like without having to think about it and just be like, okay, now I know how to do Coptic stitch mm -hmm. binding. So I'm going to do a couple of journals in this binding and then I'll switch to a different thing and... Um, that's a good way to do it yeah i'm trying to just be a little bit not precious about it which i find with crafting often holds me back where i'm yeah. like it's got to be perfect i gotta redo that I, mm -hmm. no no <laughs> i'm just gonna it'll never get finished factory. it'll never get finished if you have that mindset all exactly the time. exactly so that's a little update on my book binding um the other update i needed to do was that i went to an event <gasps> yeah that's right i go to events sometimes <laughs> So I went to an event in Kentville, mm -hmm. and uh, that is in our wonderful Nova Scotia. Uh -huh. And it's, um, yeah, it was for Gasparo Press, who is a publisher here in Nova Scotia, and they do letterpress books. Ooh, okay. So they have letterpress machines, and I took a little video for the for the B-roll here and stuff, but they have letterpress machines, wood type, metal type, every, it was railing. It was so much fun. Oh, it yes. was such a blast. I got to letterpress print um, some stuff. Here's like a random sheet Ooh. that I got to press some lino prints and oh, stuff. Cool. And I got some, yeah, the other huge thing, I didn't even finish that sentence because I'm so excited. <laughs> I got some, I got to print some other stuff is what I was trying to say. But the other thing is because like they do this event every year 
Um, but, but I think this might be the first one since COVID. Okay. Um, but they used to like do this every year. But what they do as well is that because it's a giant print shop, this is so exciting, Raylene, because it's a giant print shop, they have a lot of off cuts of okay. like, they'll oh, be yeah, making yeah. books and they'll have a lot of paper that they can't use anymore, but it's <gasps> good quality paper. And so it was on sale. So I got oh. all <laughs> of these new book binding supplies oh for $5. The rule was handful, <laughs> one handful is $5 <laughs> and I can hold this in one hand. So I got it all for $5 and I would have so been okay if they were like, that counts as two or three handfuls. Yeah. I would have been like, yeah, that's still such a bargain. Cause like really high quality paper and like uh, cardboard is expensive, yeah, but they're clearly like, would just throw it away. So they're yeah. like, we're going to make a bit of money. And mainly, I think they just wanted to, um, you know, like offer paper to people who could usually get fancy totally. papers. That's awesome. So I got these really lovely papers in different colors, which I can use in mm. different ways in books. But the the biggest win, like I swear to God, I was like, I freaked out is this book board so this oh, yeah. is the cardboard that i need to use to um wrap the marbled paper right around. to make the hard cover this is what becomes the hard I cover see. exactly and i don't have very much like i have enough to maybe make one more journal yeah. and i was like i'm gonna have to find where to buy it uh <laughs> it, was, it was actually gonna stop me from making books and then we went to this event it was so much fun and i got all of this book board so now i have enough to make like a dozen journals or something. So are you only able to get more of it at that event or can you go back to this place, you know, when yeah, the event's that's not really, happening? That's a good cue. I bet you they always have off cut. So think. I probably could just ask them if I can like come occasionally yeah. and, um, and just pick stuff up. Cause that would be super easy. But the other thing is my book binding teacher in Halifax, yeah. she sells it. Oh, and so go. I can get it from her as well. So there are some spots. I wanted to also show you some of the other beautiful posters that I got. This is um, just a really lovely letterpressed print that says Nova Scotia on it, which <laughs> I, I love. <laughs> um, and this is by my new friend um, at Woodshed Press. Katie at Woodshed Press. She has a press um, in Middleton. I think it was Middleton. I haven't been, so I'm not, I don't remember. But uh, I'll link to her Instagram because... This is my Raylene. We're, we're I think we're at the beginning this of a long, a lifelong rabbit hole. Um, I believe it. There was this printer there whose name is Amos Kennedy. So much fun. He like is. Uh, he uses the hashtag. I think it was hashtag. Amos Kennedy's school of bad printing. And so the, the whole ethos is just like having fun with yeah, printing and not yeah. worrying about it being perfect. Um, and he was such a blast. He's like my new favorite printer. He was so funny <laughs> and cool. He was so cool. Um, anyways, he's like he's like an older man and he wears overalls and a pink shirt all of the time. Oh. Like it's his uniform. Yeah. He was a very cool dude. Um, but he had these prints that you could grab. This one says, live your life, forget your age. Mm -hmm. Love that love that this one be satisfied with the needs instead of the wants mm. 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 hot damn and then this one i just kind of grabbed last minute because it reminded me of orwell a good lie finds more believers than a bad truth Ooh. Mm. 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 <laughs> so got some fun prints got to do printing got to meet printers got to hear talks so I will also link to Gaspero Press because they ran such a great event and I think they're a cool page to follow because they do all this letterpress printing stuff yeah. all of the time and it was really, really awesome. Wow, that is I also, super cool. Oh, I met a subscriber. <gasps> she was so nice. Please, God, I think her name was Jen. God, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> but she was really nice and she came up and she was like... Um, yeah, she was just really lovely and it was great to talk to her and she was an accountant and then suddenly I started talking about accounting with her and I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was like, let's talk, about, let's talk about books again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the other thing I needed to mention, Ray, I went to three bookshops. Oh, heck yeah. Is yep. it because you were yep. nearby when you went to this event? Or? Yeah, I was like, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a little circle here. I'm gonna do, so I did Black Cat Books oh. in Kentville. That sounds cool. That was lovely. Um, and I will insert some footage here because I did take footage of all of them. Um, that was a really great bookshop. I got you something there that you can't see yet. Oh, <laughs> is it a cat? Um, <laughs> it's, it's a full cat. 
Uh, then I also went to the Odd Book in Wolfville, Ooh. and I got the pretty look at this thing, really. Oh my gosh. Sha- this is Shakespeare's sonnets in perhaps the it's prettiest gorgeous. edition I've ever seen. I don't think it's old. Like I think it's like a newer. It's printing. just like a cool, tiny little like yes, fine, just done rebound. in a. Gold really thing. beautiful way this yeah. is like my now my new favorite book yeah i'm obsessed with it it just has such good you know how people say mouth feel about yeah. food <laughs> it has really good hand feel like mm. it just feels nice and like you could put it in your little pocket yeah carry it around I love this you. shop the odd book it was really cool there were so many books up and there was an upstairs and it was like it was a used bookstore oh yeah and it was very largely like books like this where it was just like the guy clearly is trying to find cool editions of stuff and rarer books and stuff and when i was paying for this he said to me he was like he's like i think all poetry should be like this (laughs) and i was like you know what i kind of agree with you actually because i like love the pocketbook editions of you know lunch poems and howl Mm -hmm. The like they're little and i'm like i think there is something about having a small poetry maybe should be kind of smaller and handier and like I don't yeah, know, but also it's... like a little leather bound hardcover is so incredible. Because oh, if you think back to like, you know, imagine somebody in like a Jane Austen novel reading a book, yes. like what would they be reading? They'd be reading that. The, this, exactly. <laughs> That's the vibe. Yeah, you're totally right. I always you're loved totally books right. like that as a kid. Like if I would go over to yeah. some random, you know, adult's house that my mom like took me with her or whatever, and they happen to have cool books like that, I would just like take them off the shelf and like look at yes. them because I love them so much. Like I don't... I have no idea what they would have been about, but I would have happily (laughs) taken them all and read them all. (laughs) I also went to another shop and I literally don't know where I put the bookmark that I got there. Hmm. Uh, That's okay. The book shop was called Reader's Haven in Windsor. It was a lovely shop and it was a lovely lady who owns the shop. And I asked her how long had she been, like how long had she had the shop for? And she said, um, that she was like next month it will be 20 years and i was like oh my god i thought you were about to say like in one month we hit a year yeah no it was in a month or two or something it was 20 or 25 years i was like that's so cool and she said that they'd been in four different locations in windsor Mm. but that um yeah she now has this shop it was really lovely and i i told her about i tell everyone whenever i go into one of these bookshops i tell them i'm doing this project right and I'm trying to visit every bookshop in Nova Scotia and they're always so excited about it. <laughs> and I, um, and she was like, well, I think I have the neatest used bookshop in Nova Scotia. <laughs> and she's totally right. It was oh. so tidy, really tidy. Oh, I thought really she meant like the most nifty, like the neato. coolest. Yeah. I know. I thought, she, I thought she meant that as well at the beginning, but then I like, she was just like, I really care about stuff being neat and tidy. I and it that. was really neat and tidy. Like a lot of used bookstores and it's a fun vibe as well, but a lot of them are there's like there's books everywhere Mm -hmm. piles and stacks she was like meticulous it was a very tidy shop which was lovely um so that's three more on the list baby oh my goodness Um, i think i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do that too you just gotta still power ahead starting now power Mm -mm -mm -mm. yeah um all right i didn't mean to take that long in the intro but i had so many things to tell you (laughs) really yeah no kidding before we dive in, today we're doing a fun episode. We're going to be rating bookish things out of 10. I think this is our third episode doing I think this. So, yeah. We will link to the other two down below as well. God, I'm keep making a lot of promises here. <laughs> Before we jump into that, one final little bit of housekeeping. As of today, November 6th, our book subscription, our bookmark subscription mm. is open. So, this is a lot of fun, you guys. It's really fun way to get beautiful bookmarks it's a really fun way to get cute mail but it's also a really great way to support the podcast so if you want cute mail great bookmarks and to support the pod (laughs) let me tell you about this great deal (laughs) (laughs) uh you can sign up for our bookmark club uh four times throughout the year you'll be sent beautiful bookmarks where we collaborated with the bookmark artist um and hired them specifically to create beautiful bookmarks Mm -hmm. we already have two of the artists lined up for next year and they are out of this world fantastic and exciting um you also get two stickers and you get a little video from us talking about the bookmarks and um recommending you a book to read with the bookmark Mm -hmm. so it's a little package and the window is only open 
for two weeks. So you have to sign up now. Yeah. No right now. <laughs> um, because you can't sign up again for next year. Like if you want to participate next year, you have to sign up today or <laughs> today at some period in the next two weeks. <laughs> yeah. All right. That was all of the updates, I think, Ray. Did you have any um, things you wanted to mention on the top? Um, I mean, I just realized I never really talked about the big party that I did with my friends. Yes. So I'll Let's briefly talk it, about baby. it. I won't, I won't go into too much detail because I could literally be here for three hours trying to explain it. It's true. It. Um, <laughs> but essentially, it was my very good friend Rebecca's birthday recently. And so Julia, who was just on the podcast last week, Julia and, and I decided to concoct a very elaborate party plan for her. Because we started doing this last year, like each of us, like the two different pairs or whatever, we would all come up with crazy ideas for each other's birthdays and just like yeah. make it a big surprise. And it was so fun. And so we decided to do that, but like extra crazy this year. And so because we're all obsessed with Stardew Valley, like we love Stardew, we have a farm together that we've almost reached perfection on we love it mm. we decided to do this like big stardew themed party for rebecca and she's also obsessed with puzzles like she loves trivia any kind of puzzle she loves it so yeah. we thought we would combine those two loves and make like a almost like an escape room type of vibe where there was you know a clue that would lead to another clue that would lead to another clue that would you know and so that yeah. it ended up being this huge undertaking that took us probably 40 hours of planning to come up with honestly like it was a really really crazy party <laughs> um and i came dressed as professor snail <laughs> for anybody who's played stardew valley will know um it was ginger island themed and julia was the mysterious mrs key so Ooh. that won't mean a lot to a lot of people but to the people <laughs> who know you know it was pretty cool it was pretty awesome so all in all it went really well and was i'm glad it's over so i can like i can just focus on like reading and stuff again yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the planning was so much it was so, so it much, was but... so elaborate yeah it was there were so many puzzles that led to other puzzles and there was different that currencies like we had multiple multiple different currencies that rebecca could earn which she then had to use to buy things that would help her solve the final puzzle and stuff like that. There was invisible or, ink involved. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was also wasn't didn't she have to use a, a different currency to buy drinks? Um. Yeah. Yeah. We we gave her bones, which like, she could use to buy hints if she was feeling lost. But she could also <laughs> she could use them to buy almost anything. Um. We also gave her a recorder that if she wanted to earn more bones, she just had to play us a little song every now and then. Oh my God, and I would determine so if if, she, if it was good enough for her to get lots of bones or maybe just one bone. It was very funny. It was very so silly. A, cu a couple of weeks ago, Raylene and I called just for fun to read the gra a graphic novel memo, which we talked about. Yeah. But in that call, Raylene also just told me every detail of the party <laughs> and i swear to god thing. it was 45 minutes yeah. of raylene just going from top to bottom explaining <laughs> every puzzle every hint clue um mini side quest game like she's like so this is the fishing game i'll hide under a blanket while <laughs> feeding and i was like what's happening yeah. and as i said um then i and i just think is really relatable for people who like mm. parks and recs it so reminded me of Ben Wyatt explaining the cones of Dunshire and just being like, this is, um, and the review in the show is, this game is punishingly intricate. <laughs> That's what it felt like, where I was just like, this is an incredible amount of detail. And I just like, I just super respect it. Like, I just think it's so cool that you you and Julia went so hard. And, and we're not so good elaborate. at puzzles either. That was the funny thing is we were like bamboozled <laughs> by the whole thing. We were like, I don't know how to make this a good. And we were yeah. trying to like make the puzzles connect. And I, I just want to say this will maybe be the last thing I say about it. But my favorite puzzle that we did, we mm. so it all starts like with Rebecca finding a clue. That's a picture of a gorilla with his hand out like this and he looks really sad. And yeah. next to the picture, there's a, a pile of different Play-Doh colors. And Rebecca mm. immediately goes, I know exactly what I have to do. <laughs> and we were like, okay. And so what she had to do was craft a banana out of the yellow Play-Doh, obviously. And then she had to go to the kitchen and place it in a bowl that already had a bunch of bananas. But it mm. also had the little sleeve of Bananagrams. If you've ever seen Bananagrams, yes. it's this Scrabble-like game, but it comes in a little banana pouch. So there was bananas, Bananagrams, and then she had to put the Play-Doh banana on it. And then that was her, like, winning <laughs> the next clue. 
clue, <laughs> which was then she had to use the bananagram letters to spell out something that would lead her to the next clue. And I'm really proud of that. I really yeah. think that that worked out really well. <laughs> it was beautifully, intricately made and done. Yeah. Incredible. I liked how many bananas that were involved. It was great. <laughs> but also the gorilla and banana thing is something from Ginger Island and Stardew Valley. Like it's all... Yeah it all comes back to the game and everything made sense we even had the gem birds like there's a lot i won't go i won't go more well, into you it because saying, it's crazy you saying it's all about the game is adam wyatt saying it's all about the cones <laughs> you've forgotten it's all about the cones yeah um, yeah incredible, <laughs> incredible. Yeah. i'm glad that it went really well and i'm glad that yeah, that you're now free of it as well. I'm I know free, but we're happens. also like Dude. starting to plan for next year already. <laughs> <laughs> Give it That's more good. time. That's good. If this is what um, we could do with two months of planning, what could we do with the whole year? <laughs> this, yeah, that, yeah, that's so funny. I um, that reminds me of Brooklyn Nine Nine, where they are planning Halloween, the Halloween oh, prank, yeah. like two years in advance or whatever. I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah, yesterday we recorded the Julia episode and right after recording, we just, you know, obviously chatted for a little while and <laughs> Julia just said, I think maybe we had too many currencies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so much that like what you saying the punishingly intricate thing was so accurate yeah. to this because Rebecca was just overwhelmed. She was like, what yep. is happening? Why do you want me to play <laughs> Junimo Kart while I'm also trying to do this quest? Like what's happening? <laughs> It was, yeah, it was hectic. It took like it's four great. hours, but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it was an entire evening. That's yeah. great. Though. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Well, <clears throat> let us transition to our book game. Yeah. So today we are rating things out of 10. Yes. We have a master spreadsheet, which I will also be linking down below. Yep. If you want to participate, you can look at this spreadsheet, rank the things, rate the things that we've rated before. And today we're going to be adding 10 new things. Well, we'll see how many things we'll we see. add. <laughs> uh, we'll see how many things we add uh, to the spreadsheet today. But Raylene, how about you start us off? And we'll, yeah, people can see how the game works as okay. we begin. Yes. So the kind of prompt that I am going to be starting with is listening to an audiobook narrated by the author. Very interesting. Very what, interesting. What would you rate that out of 10? I will give this a 9.5. Ooh. Here's the situation. <laughs> I believe this to be the superior method of audiobooking. Mm. When it is read by the author, I feel like we're getting the purest form of the thing. Yeah. Because they know what parts to read sad, what parts it's to true. read angry, what parts to like really emphasize. And so I feel like we're getting the truest experience. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's like some authors were not meant to read things out loud. Totally. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> and it, it has happened to me before where I'm like, ooh, I think maybe they should have hired a professional. So that's a tricky call. But honestly, overall, it's been the best for me when that happens. And so, yes, I give it a very high rating. What about I, you? I agree. I think I'll go with nine because okay. I feel like it also depends on the situation slash book. I think mm -hmm. I think for if we were specifying that it was nonfiction or memoirs, I would say 10 out of 10. Like it should always be the yeah. author reading that. When it comes to fiction, I think there's a little bit more wiggle room. Like obviously we've got authors like Neil Gaiman who have a great voice. And yes. that's exactly what you want when you're listening to an audiobook is like a Neil Gaiman type person reading it. Um, yes. But then, yeah, there are times where it's like, nah, this doesn't really fit. They could have they could have hired someone mm. so but i would say yeah like you, exactly like you said generally it's the best so nine we'll yeah nine that gives us a um overall uh books on bound ra rating average of 9.25 mm, thank you so we really like that yeah we um do. is there anything else that has a 9.25 no the the closest thing is the start the feeling of starting a new book oh, yeah. which we gave an average of 9.4 <laughs> we just love that we just really love that. Yeah. Um, okay, so my prompt is when the first page of the book isn't actually page one. Oh. So what I mean by that is yeah. when you open to page one of text, the story has yeah. begun, but the page number is like page four or page 12. Oh, yeah. 
I hate that shit. I hate it. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. I give this experience a two. I I have a little bit of sympathy for it because I understand that they're trying to count the frontispiece and the whatever mm-hmm. like title page and stuff. But I think page one of a book is page one of the text. It should. You know be. what? Yeah. I'm giving it a one. I give this experience a one. It That's always funny. bothers me. It's yeah. a pet peeve. Okay, well, it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers you. I think I would actually give it a five. because. What? <laughs> okay, here's my reasoning. Sometimes, it like just the fact of it not being page one irritates me a little bit. Yeah. But what I like is you're now ten pages further into the book than you thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> I do know what you mean. You know? Like, I you're starting off, like in first place you're ahead of the race you're ahead of the game especially if it's a long book it's kind of like oh okay so the book is a thousand pages but i'm already on page 12 so it's not as right as i thought it was gonna be so there's like a little bit of okayness about it like it gives you a boost you get it gives a me a little boost, boost and it doesn't yeah. bother me enough to like bring it down further than that in my in my rating so i would say five okay percent. yeah well um i have had that i totally know what you mean i've had that experience with like textbooks before or whatever like yeah. a like a book that i'm reading for school where i'm like oh here we go and it, by the time i actually get to page one it's already like page 32 because there was so much <laughs> yeah. nonsense at the beginning of the book um and that does feel exciting actually so you are right about that but it doesn't matter because overall we've given it an it's... average of three stars <laughs> Hi, yeah. um another thing that has an average of three stars for us is the feeling of reading a hardcover book with the dust jacket on <laughs> Um, All right. What is your next one? Okay. Next one is just books with sprayed edges. Oh. Like on the pages. Mm. For people who don't know, that's just like when the outside of the pages are colored. A color. Yeah. Yeah. Or black or whatever. This is interesting. I think when I was a teenager, this impressed me more. Like I was (laughs) like, I I was like, yeah, I'm like, this is the highest form of quality. Mm -hmm. Like I was just like, this is so, so fancy. Now I would say it really, really depends because if it's like a really bright color or kind of an obnoxious thing, I actually don't like it. Like I just, I I won't buy that copy. If it's like a fancy marbled edge on like an older book or just very classily done, then I'm like, wow, that's really pretty and unique. Mm -hmm. So I feel very like, ooh, middling about it. I think I, yeah, I think I'm going to give it like a seven. That's what I was gonna say too. Actually, I would oh, go really? seven. Yeah, because okay, I do. Seven, I do seven, quite seven. seven. Yeah, like I, I do quite like the effect of it. Like, but I wouldn't yeah. want every book to have it. So no. I wouldn't say like ten out of ten. Put a sprayed edge on every book. I also think <laughs> it looks better on hardcovers, and I feel like paperbacks with sprayed edges are like a two for me. Like I don't like that as much. Mm. I don't know why, but like Six of Crows is a really good example of like the sprayed edges really making a book look cool because like it's got a dark gray cover and black sprayed edges and it just is like very dramatic and yeah. I think that that's pretty cool it is pretty cool so yeah no i think that makes sense overall we're giving it a seven so we like it yeah but we don't love it and it's not like universal mm-hmm. if it's done well it's done well if it's not it's like maybe exactly and i guess while we're on that. the topic i have a question that i don't know if you'll know the answer to mm-hmm. have you ever seen like on older books where sometimes yeah. just one side will be sprayed but not the rest yeah do you know why yes. that is i don't know why that is mm-hmm. and i wish i did it's the it's like usually it's the, the top. top yeah what? They'll sp- they will have done like ink to the top red or something. Yeah, and not. I'm the sure sides. someone will know the answer to that. So maybe let us know. <laughs> maybe that will be. I like this. This will be my book binding research question. Ooh. I will report back with an intricate Please answer do. next. Please week. do because there um, has to be a reason. It's always the top book binding. But question. also sometimes like the top and side, but not bottom. Like it's, yeah, <laughs> it's so why weird. top or only one side on old books? Okay, Gotta I've know. written that down. I won't forget. All right, my next, we're, we're going to keep on the topic of edges, Ooh. <laughs> because I realized we never actually, I think we used it as an example right at the beginning, okay. but we never actually officially ranked deckled edges. <gasps> Did we not? Oh. No, it's not on our spreadsheet, so we must not have. I guess we didn't. Yeah, we, we, we debated it about it a long time ago. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so and we it. also did, we did French flaps. Oh, so yeah, in the same family. It's in the same family, yep, the con- the kind of very, just a book section. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel about deckled edges? Um, I think deckled edges are a 10 out of 10. Wow! 
<laughs> I defended them back then and I'll defend them now. I think that they're amazing. And like not only because this was That's my so big funny. like finishing move in that debate was that deckled edges don't give you paper cuts. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. I'm just bringing that back. I think that that's very solid. They're very soft on yes, the sides. They and are soft. I don't find that they're hard to turn because as we discussed in the debate, I turn my pages from the top, not from the side. <laughs> and what else? I feel like there's something about deckled edges that I don't really like remember how they're made or where they come from, but they're like, aren't they like the natural way that a book gets cut or something like that yeah so i mean i actually do know the answer to this yeah. one and it's a very cool the reason for deckled edges is really cool however now it's fake like uh. all deckled edges that you buy in the shop are manufactured to look like a facsimile of the why we originally had deckled edges the it's oh, it's interesting it's just like because of the way that books were made a really long time ago not all books but most books mm -hmm. certain books were made um they were given to you with the pages still right. not cut not cut yeah so each page would l be folded yeah to the next side so like because of the way <laughs> so you would letter cut it open yeah like you know like when people have letter openings yeah. or whatever yeah they would use those themselves at home That's and cut wild. their own books <laughs> Um, and so you'd be cutting open your own books or you'd have a letter cutter, like a person who yeah. was a book cutter who would do it for you or, or whatever. But because of the process of binding the book, you had to cut them yourself and that you just naturally wouldn't do it perfectly yeah. because it would be difficult it's to impossible. do it perfectly. So you would have all these kind of deckled yeah. um, edges. Now we just do it because it looks because pretty it looks and it cool. reminds us of the past. That's yeah. true. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's true too. Like I do love like the the vibe of an older book tradition or something yeah. like there's something about that that i just really like and this is a big this is a big yeah. question it's a big cue because like i uh we did have that whole debate debate about it and yeah. maybe we can find what episode that was on it was like episode was, three it would be so easy to find okay it, cool so it i'll link really to that on. <laughs> deckled edge debate uh episode i'll link to that in the show notes as well if you want to go back and listen to that episode <laughs> it was hilarious but <laughs> it was a really funny episode and we always kind of intend to do to do more of these like book debates yeah. but we just don't really disagree about that many yeah so we, it would have been fake debates like we would have had it to pretend fake to debate. fight <laughs> i I do, I, I do like the aesthetic of a deckled edge. Mm. Like if I'm looking at a book on a desk and it has deckled edges, I think it looks yeah. really romantic and beautiful. That being said, I find the impracticality of it so annoying. Mm. I guess I, I do a combination of flipping the page from the top yeah. or from the side. You can't. You like literally can't flip through a book that has deckled edges. Yeah. Because it gets like caught. Like yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to like so you I don't like that you can't do that. I don't like that if you want to search through, you gotta you have to just use the top. Um so I find it really frustrating. I also don't like that like when you like kind of rest your hand on it or finger on it or whatever, it's kind of folding some of the pages because mm. they stick out a little bit more than others. But I also hate the fakeness of it. It's fake. Yeah, that's true. It's not actually deckled. It's produced by a machine in a factory to remind us of what deckled edges were once. So uh, that fakeness, that grinds my gears. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a two. Ooh. Because I do see the appeal of the aesthetics of it. Mm -hmm. That's so That funny. means it gets an average we'll never of agree. six. <laughs> we'll never agree. And I don't want us to. Um... I think that's the first six we've ever gotten, actually. Oh, interesting. That is the first six we've ever gotten. Yeah, that's gotten. a pretty wide, uh, like, we're far apart yeah. from each other on that one. <laughs> I'm looking at one we both gave 2.62. <laughs> we, we I think gave, one of us just said it and the other one was like, yes, yeah. I agree. <laughs> uh, 2.6 was given to when you carry a book with you all day long, but you don't read a don't single read page it. from it. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that's painful. Such that's a 2.6 energy. Mm -hmm. um okay what's your next one okay so my next one is kind of like on the same train as my sprayed edges thing a little bit when the font in a book is a color other than black oh my god how does that make that's you feel? very interesting when yeah. the font of a book is a color other than black for example I, I can't remember which book it was but there was a book a long time ago where the font was purple and then there was also Legend by Marie Lu, I think was one where it was like oh, burgundy yes. or something. Like, what was that all about? Totally. You know what I mean? 
that's rare yeah like it doesn't really happen that much it's really rare like i don't think that i've read a book in the last five years that had a book that didn't have black i think it's mainly a ya thing probably yeah it's like obviously like a special edition thing or like a it's I think the reason that I'm about to give this a three Mm. is because it's a gimmick. Yeah. It's a gimmick. I agree. It has no functional purpose. Because if the, the, I mean, the point of font is to be readable or to portray something about the books. Like, you would pick a font because, like, it matches the concept of the book a bit better than a different font. But but the the main function of font is utility. We need it to be readable. Mm-hmm. And no font is going to be more readable than black font on white paper. Yeah. Like, 100%. that's always going to be the highest contrast, most readable thing. Mm-hmm. And I can just imagine, like, reading a purple font. It's just not going to be as legible. Yeah. For a gimmicky reason. So I'm... But it could be fun. I could see that as fun. I could see it more, like, I'm thinking of graphic novels, for example, mm-hmm. where, like, it's... um. Like, in graphic novels, it doesn't bother me because it's color is part of the experience. Yeah. Or there's, like, I can imagine books where, like, one word is a color or other... Yeah, like I feel like if it's pages. used in a more specific way, like, uh, another example would be House of Leaves. There's a lot of text that's in red, but it's right. just specific things that are in red. And yes, it, like, adds cool. to the reading experience. So yeah. in cases like that, I would probably rank it higher, which is why I guess if I'm going, like, overall in all the different ways it could be... 2.6 <laughs> yeah like it's not the worst thing but it's definitely not good. all right so what is 5.6 divided by 20 uh we give it a 2.8 overall that's funny okay yeah we don't like that <laughs> we decided we don't like that <laughs> um okay i've got another really general one okay. i was enjoying the general ones when i was writing this yeah this is gonna be controversial i think okay Short story collections. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. Because I, yeah, generally I do say like, oh, I love short story collections, but almost never, or maybe even never have I given a short story collection five stars. Like I've never encountered a short story collection that was like, boom, boom, boom. Every single story was was perfect. And that's just like the general kind of risk with short story collections. So I think I would say... Short story collections are like a 7.5 for me. Because okay. in general, I think they're great. I love short fiction because it's just a totally different genre in itself almost than, yeah. Yeah, than yeah, long yeah. form fiction. Because, you know, say in 10 pages, the author's trying to get a certain message across. And so they'll, they might do it in a really wacky, weird way that would never happen in a full length novel. And I just love that. I love that it, it, makes, it makes the stories a bit different. But that being said, collections... It's different from just a short story. This is we're yes, talking about exactly. it as a collective, and that's when it yes. gets a little, a little risky. You know, you're not always going <laughs> to love every single one, and yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. <laughs> I really agree with almost everything you said there. I think I am leaning a l- like um, a, a lower, lower grade than you yeah. are. I don't want to. It's an. It's insane. The whole exercise is obviously insane. <laughs> Like, what am I saying? Short story collections are... But I'm... Yeah, whatever. 6.8 yeah. is what I'm giving it. <laughs> I think that... um, I don't know. I've, I've just found that for myself... And this is obviously the whole point of this exercise yeah. is, like, personal. It's... Yeah. You could give it a 10. Um, I don't understand, really, what a short story collection is trying to do in the way that I understand what a novel is trying Mm. to do or what a poetry collection is trying to do. Like, those make sense in my brain, but I find short story collections to just usually not be as cohesive. Yeah. I find them to usually have such high variance where I read, like, two or three really good short stories in a collection Mm -hmm. and the rest I don't like. And I hate that high variance. Yeah. Um, And I just just never gravitate towards them. And like, usually if I find a book that sounds interesting and then I realize it's a short story collection, I'm instantly turned off, which is really fascinating because I know that short story collections are really hard for publishers to sell. People don't like them. (laughs) Yeah, it's tough. Um, Yeah, and that's why usually like you don't have people that are short story 
mm-hmm. authors very often yeah, yeah. that that's their only thing yeah because well, it's like really while hard we're on to the topic that. i actually just want to recommend yeah. a couple of short story collections to you and to the listeners because yeah, i feel like these cool. are the two that i've read that i've like done it the best um the first one is skin by Roald Dahl this oh, yeah. one is so good and actually perfect for the season although it's after Halloween now when this comes out but every single mm. story the the whole like shtick of the whole collection is that each one has some kind of twist and so you yeah. don't know when it's going to come or what form it's going to come in but there's always a twist and a lot of them are dark and kind of mm. spoopy which is really fun so I love that collection and almost every single story was like a knockout and then mm. the other one is Unclean Jobs for Women and Girls by Alyssa Nutting yes I talk, I've talked about this one since the beginning of this podcast. It's just so good. And it's all about like women and girls. It's literally like a very female led story collection. And you just get to see lots of different perspectives on the female experience, which is really good. And I, once again, just feel like this collection knocks it out of the park. Like there was maybe only one or two stories I didn't connect with as much, but overall yeah. they're all awesome. I could definitely see this, my mind changing on this if I yeah. read a couple of really great That's the short thing. You just have to read the right ones. It's so hard yeah, to find them. Yeah. 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 And it is personal, too. Like, it has to be one totally. tailored to you, you know? Like, I don't yeah. know if you would like Skin by Roald Dahl, but. I'm thinking of, like, Dubliners. Mm. Incredible. Incredible. Like, that to me is probably the most famous and most highly acclaimed short story collection, or, collection of all time. Yeah. Um, Yep, I'm going to stand by that. <laughs> yep, I think I do think that. Um, I might be missing one, but whatever. I think, but I, that's the only one that I'm like, yeah. That, or, oh, uh, Good Man is Hard to Find, Flannery O'Connor. I really enjoyed that Are one. either of but those, then, like, stories that are connected to each other? I'm just wondering. Nope. Okay. Well, Dubliners, all of the stories are set in Dublin. Yeah. So yeah. they they have that in common, but they're not. They're not actually the connected. Character. Okay. No. That's curious. I was just wondering if that was maybe something you would prefer in a short story collection where like <sighs> they all kind of one leads to another, to another, to another. Like uh, A Visit from the Goon Squad is a very good example of it's kind of like yeah. a novel told through short stories. Mm-hmm. So that could be like a good in between maybe for people who are unsure. It's interesting. Yeah. All right, Ray, what's your next prompt? Oh, here's one that's kind of similar to one that you did earlier. Uh, when you think there's lots of pages left in a book, but it's Ooh, all index yeah. and bibliography, etc. <laughs> afterwards or whatever. I think I'm going to give this a, you know what? I'm going to give it a five. Ooh, I'm going to okay. give it a five because I do, like on the one hand, it's not the book's fault. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it has to give you that information. It has to have its index. Mm -hmm. It has to have its whatever it is that it has there that's taking up all those pages. Yeah. But so so it's not his fault. The book didn't know (laughs) that you were making um, assumptions. Yeah. But on the other hand, it does feel like a trick. It feels like a little trick that everyone pulled on me because I wasn't expecting it. Mm. Okay. It's a surprise. I thought one thing was happening, but it turns out a different thing was happening. Nobody likes that. Um, so yeah, I think I can give it a five. What do you think? I think I would give it a seven because I, I, similarly to my whole, like, oh, you start the book and it's already page 10. I kind of like the surprise of being like, oh, there's a little bit, like, I don't know. It's not that I want to read less, but like, for some reason, it's just like exciting to me to be like, oh, okay, the story, like, oh, it's wrapping up a little more quickly than I thought. Like a lot of times I'll kind of know how many pages I have left in a book as I'm like nearing the end. Yeah. Um, And so to kind of be surprised every now and then is kind of fun. Also, I would say usually I know if there's going to be index or bibliography like a lot of times mm. i'll I, I like to flip through my books like periodically while i'm reading them just to see like what's going on at the end not to like <laughs> read ahead or anything like that but just to just to get an idea so a lot of times i'll know especially if i'm reading like a game of thrones book there's a huge like family history like index yes. at the back of every yeah, single book yeah, so yeah. i already know that's going to be there so sometimes it's not a surprise um but when it happens it is kind of fun it's kind of nice yeah you know what uh, this is revealing that you, one of the things that you do like is when you realize you'll be finishing a book sooner than you thought. Yeah. Like that is clearly something that brings you joy. I like finishing it's... books so that I can then move on to another book. And like knowing exactly. that I can finish it a little bit sooner is definitely an exciting feeling. Yeah. For me. Yeah. That's interesting. It is. Um, I feel the same. And whenever yeah. I'm like, I'm about to finish this, this means I can start another one. It's yeah. Like, Actually, that reminds me of a fun fact about me from when I was a kid. Oh. I used to like not finish 
almost every book I read, like I would just like give up before like two pages before it was over because I was like, I, I, I just don't care what happens in the last two pages. I'm done. And you were so excited to start at the yeah. next one. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but that was something I did almost every time I read a book. That's so fascinating. Isn't that weird? And it shows that this is not new. No, that this I've is been doing like... it since I was a child. <laughs> you were trying to power through. And like the types oh, of books really I was reading, the last page probably didn't have any kind of, you know, important reveals or anything like that. Because yeah. it was it's just, just like a Magic Treehouse book or whatever. God, I love Magic Treehouse <laughs> books. That's fascinating, really. And we're really learning about your psychology. I know. <laughs> I'm so strange and messed up. <laughs> Um, okay, here's another controversial one. Yep. We kind of talked about this on the last episode. Not the Julia episode, the one before that. Oh, yeah. Um, Audible Originals. Ooh, yeah. Audible Originals. Lay, lay it out for me. What do you think? That's a zero out of ten. That's a zero. I'm also going to give it a zero. <laughs> I think that an audiobook should never be exclusive. Not only to, like, one streaming service if, or whatever you want to call it but also specifically to like a retailer that we don't like <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> i think that that's yeah. just wrong <laughs> you know what i'm gonna change my answer i'm gonna give it a 0. 0.5 <laughs> okay because here's why i completely agree with you right like i completely agree yeah. with you i first of all I just think that it goes against the ethos of books and libraries and reading. Yeah, like you could never get it for free unless you're doing a trial. You can never get it for free. And I just think that that's ugly. Like, I don't know. There's something. And it's like, what is fair in this? Like, I don't think there is such thing as fair, actually. Like, nobody deserves any. Do you know what I mean? Other than human rights, obviously. But like, (laughs) like, what, what do people deserve? You don't deserve anything, I guess. But like, I... I just think that there's this beautiful, weird loophole with reading Mm. where for some reason we have all collectively (laughs) agreed that books should be free at the library. I think that's so beautiful. (laughs) And the idea that this one giant corporation is like, actually... Uh-huh. We have a uh, we have a horrible loophole that destroys that beautiful loophole. That's true. Which means we can produce books that you will never get to hear unless you give us money. I'm yeah. like, that is so nasty. Because obviously with a library, you don't get to just get whatever book whenever you want mm-hmm. it. You usually have to wait because yeah. there's only a few copies that your community is sharing or whatever. But you can eventually get it. Yeah. You can eventually if find it. Patient, but no, you will get it. <laughs> not with Audible Originals. They're like, we're putting it behind this paywall and no one else will ever get access to it. The reason that I'm giving it a 0.5 though is because some of them are so good. I was good. just going to say, I think I'm going to change my answer. Yeah. (laughs) Like a lot of them are so good. And like, I like you guys, like I've told you guys, like I just keep doing free trials so that Mm. I don't actually, I am not giving them money, but like the Diane Keaton reading Joan Didion. I'm like, that's genius. Or Rosamund Pike reading Pride and Prejudice or um, Rachel McAdams reading Anne of Green Gables. I'm I'm obsessed with all of like the big, amazing actors and actresses doing readings of like classic novels. Like I want to listen to all of those. Oh, it's so but I don't cool. want to pay for it. <laughs> that's, so, that's so frustrating. That's true. I'll change my just... answer to 0.5 because I agree. Like, they are <sighs> using the money that they are getting from... <laughs> for something cool. For To do something cool with it. Like, I mean, yeah. there probably are a bunch of Audible originals that are just normal audiobooks and whatever. But they do have some that are, like, above and beyond what you would normally yeah. see. So, fine. 0.5. Yeah. One thing, one, reason, one thing I will say this reminded me that I... Do you remember that years ago I got to be on the Life's Library podcast with John Green and Rosianna Hulse Rojas? Mm -hmm. Um, And that was such a like, oh, my God, it was so special. The book I wanted to read with them was So You've Been Publicly Shamed. Oh, yeah. But they said that I wasn't allowed to pick it. And I totally agree. But because their reasoning was people can't get the audiobook from the library. And they want people to be able to get the books from the library if they want. Mm -hmm. And so they couldn't do books that had Audible originals. And I was like, I totally respect and agree with that move. But that was a, yeah, it was frustrating. I was mad at Audible. (laughs) (laughs) Mad at Audible. Yeah. Um, all right, let's do one more each, Ray. Okay, sounds good. What do you good. want to do as your last one? Okay, my last one is connected to audiobooks, so I'll do that again. Okay. Um, yep. Listening to an audiobook while playing a video game. Ooh. How does that feel? Listening to an audiobook while playing a video game. 
That's interesting. When it's peak, it's peak. That's what I will say. <laughs> yeah. Because when I'm listening to an audiobook and I'm playing a video game and they're in a harmony where mm-hmm. the video game is just interesting enough that it's keeping me focused. Yeah. Um, and I'm like having a nice, calm, fun time playing this cozy game. And the audiobook is great enough that it's like, um, but not like it's not comp it's so complicated that I can't that yeah, I have to just yeah. like focus on it. When those two things are harmonizing, it feels like a peak experience mm-hmm. and like is kind of maybe actually one of like my favorite audiobook listening experiences yeah. is that like I'll be playing Stardew Valley and I'll be listening to the uh, to a game and I'm just like this is really lovely. Mm-hmm. However, when it goes wrong, it can be very frustrating. So yeah. I've had experiences where I'm like doing something in the game and I it's very it becomes very engrossing. And so then I I'm paying attention to the game and then I realize, oh God, I don't remember what I just listened to and I've got to rewind. Uh-oh. And it's a little annoying because maybe my phone is somewhere else or like whatever. And I'm like, oh God, I gotta put the game down. Pause the game. Do this. Rewind, yeah. rewind. No, no, I missed it again. Rewind, rewind. And like the back and forth is not <laughs> yeah, very pleasant. Not but overall, I think it's really fun. So I'm going to give it an 8.5. Ooh, very good. I was going to give it an 8. So I think I'll stick okay. with my gut. I, I agree with, yeah, pretty much everything you said. I am quite particular when I pick what game I'm going to play and also which book I'm listening to. Like if I was listening to something really complicated that I really want to focus in on, I just wouldn't pl- no. like listen to it while playing a video Definitely game. Definitely not. But yeah. I find listening to memoirs works really well because mm. it's like listening to a podcast. And I also like yep. listening to like interview videos while I'm playing video games. So it kind of all fits. I feel like I'm able to focus on it better for some reason i guess not having like an actual story to follow is very important when you're kind of distracted i think because i feel like like we've Mm. talked about before listening to um fiction on audio you just have to like focus a little bit more because it's so easy that if you miss one sentence it could just derail the whole thing totally and you don't know what's happening suddenly in the story whereas with a memoir it's like not as do or die you know so i generally love the experience and i've kind of figured out a way to make it work for me Mm. um but at the same time you do kind of have to make adjustments and so that's you know where i knock a couple of points off and also i found that i have to listen to them a little bit slower i instead of listening to them super sped up i just have to listen to them on regular speed or like 1.25 at the maximum just to make sure i'm not um missing anything but also if you're playing a video game that has any kind of dialogue that screws it up so you've got to pick your games carefully because I find it the moment I start reading something on the screen, whoosh, nothing's in my ears anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's super true. So, it, yeah. You I generally love it, though. It. I generally I do, love yeah. it. And especially a lot of times I'll just play Mario Kart. <laughs> so it's very oh, easy. Oh, yeah. I find that game very, very cool. mindless because I'm yeah. so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so great. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, that gives it an average of 8.25 from the team. Very nice. My final one is going, my final prompt is when you want to check how many pages are left in your chapter, you flip the page Uh and you're like, oh, nope. You flip, you flip, and you have to keep flipping so much longer than you thought you would. (laughs) Oh, that's such a specific (laughs) feeling. I love that. Um, I would give that feeling just gut reaction. That's like a 2.5. I really, really don't like that because when you're checking to see how many pages are left in your chapter, it's because you want the chapter to be over soon. (laughs) The reason you're doing it is because you're like, oh, I'll just finish this chapter and then I'll go to bed. And the moment you realize there's just a few too many pages, you're like, okay, this is a moment I have to make a big decision. Do I stay up later than I should or do I stop in the middle of a chapter? And that is just a devastating feeling. Nobody wants to feel that. That's why I respect books with short chapters so much. Like just generally short chapters. So you never have to worry about that. You're like, oh, each chapter is three or four pages. It's no problem. And then you never even have to have that moment where you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, I wonder. You just know. And I love that. You just know. Yeah. 2.5, huh? 2.5. I think I'm... uh... Okay, what was the one that we both gave 2.6 to? That was... Can you... (laughs) When you carry a book with you all day, but you don't read a single page from it. I think that I detest that more than I detest this. Oh, interesting. So I'm going to give this a (laughs) 2.8 so that our average... Average of (laughs) 2.65 or something. (laughs) 
2.8 plus 2.5 is 5.3 divided by 20 uh, equals 2.65. Yes. Wow. So it just, just beats out the other one. Hilarious. <laughs> um yeah i totally agree basically i had this happen to me like two nights ago oh. where i was like i was literally it was exactly like you p- played it out really <laughs> i was in bed it was late at night i was enjoying the book but i was like i'm liking the book i'm reading but i, I was just like i'm just tired now and i want this to be over so that i can put the, the book to bed and I, I'm like, how many pages are left? And I do a flip, and I'm like, okay, flip, ah, oh, flip, ah, oh, shoot, the flip, what? No, oh, God, this is longer than <laughs> flip. worse and worse. No, and I was like, what do I do? And I looked at the time, and I was like, I'm just gonna finish it because I want to. Like the book that I'm reading is like very segmented. Okay. I was like, so if I finish tonight, then tomorrow when I pick it back up, it will be. But mm-hmm. anyways, it was a frustrating moment. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I give that a 2.8 for uh, overall a 2.65 average. So of the books that or of the thingies that we ranked today, Mm. I don't think we got any new highs or any new lows. Wait, 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 wait. When's Audible one the the lowest we've ever done? The lowest, actually, yeah. Audible Originals overall got a 0.5 rating from us. Yeah. That ties it with covers that have a velvety texture. Oh, oh, yeah. (laughs) That's like my least favorite thing. I hate that more than Audible Originals. <laughs> yeah, you gave that a zero. Um, <laughs> that's, that's my least funny. favorite. But then the highest thing we re- re- rated today was listening to an audiobook read by the author. Oh. We gave that a 9.25. Pretty good. I kind of regret giving it that high. We can change our no. answers. No, I don't. No, <laughs> it's peak. It's good. It's good. It is good. So like we mentioned, everyone, this spreadsheet will be linked in the description if you want to check it out and um, play along. It's there. If you want to add to it, that would, yeah, go for it. Yeah. And thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Like we mentioned, our Bookmark Club subscription is now open. That is linked in the description and show notes. Check it out if you want to join. Um, It's a lot of fun. And we're now going to record our Patreon-only mini podcast, Mm. Movie Tub, where we talk about the shows and movies we've been watching. (sighs) We'll see you there. Okay. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye.